Hello everybody and welcome to the Ben and Boz Microsoft Excel video tutorial series. We are up to lesson five. I'm Boz. I'm Ben. What's going on, man? Well, one, it's a beautiful day in Collegeville. Two, do you ever worry about that intro being like so long that you're gonna like confuse the words or anything? I'm pretty sure that I confused myself and everyone listening. So they're just like, I'm not sure what he's saying. Just I get think, to it. <laughs> I think you do a great job with it. I so. appreciate the support, man. But appreciate it. with that sentiment of just get to it, let's just get to it. All right. Two big goals today. Navigational ability on large spreadsheets. This is huge, especially when you have you know hundreds of thousands of rows or columns of data and learning basic data analysis emphasis on basic here we just want to open your eyes to what's out there and hopefully your curiosity will take it away yeah and some of the specific things as you see there we're going to teach you how to fly around the worksheet using the control uh, shortcut the home shortcut we're going to show you how to do some simple analysis with average max median and min formulas we're going to show you how to use a very powerful tool in pivot tables and then how to present your results very quickly and very visually appealing using a graph. Hey, that's what it takes to stand out. Absolutely. Create convincing arguments. All right, let's move over to our completely real sales listing from July. <laughs> completely, completely real. Completely real. All right. Doesn't this look like a huge data set? Uh, well, I can't tell because it only goes for about 14 rows. I, I, I'm kind of curious. How, how could we find out how big the data set is? Well, I'm doing the down arrow key. Down arrow key. Just over and over again. <laughs> that would probably work, right? You know, it probably will because I think you just have a few dozen rows, but imagine that you had hundreds of thousands or something like that. We'd be down arrowing for a long time. Yeah, so if you want to take a little shortcut, hit the control key and then the down arrow. So I'm holding the control key, down arrow, takes me to the last row, 98. You can see if I go down from that, there isn't anything more. So I'm already at the last row. Fly around your data with the control and the arrow keys. You can go left, right, up, down, right? Control left, control right takes me all the way to the right. Control up takes me to the very top. Again, to the left to get to A1. Just four corners, man. Just playing four corners with your data. Yeah, and if you have a keyboard that has an end key on it, I think the one Ben's has doesn't have it work the same way but I have an end key on my keyboard you can fly around also just by pressing end you don't have to hold it down and then pressing one of the arrow keys that works just kind of as, as quickly but just helps you fly around your data yeah and in this one if you hit control function and end it'll work that way take you to the very end um, but it's I don't know, a little clunky so usually I'll just do the control and arrow keys sure. Boss, how many uh, how many rows do you think there are in Excel we're at 98 right now <laughs> I'm gonna do control well, arrow is, key all the way down. This is something that I that I should know, right? Is it a few hundred thousand? I'm trying to remember. It's over a million now. So okay. I do control down arrow key. There's no more data, so it jumps to the very end. One million forty-eight thousand five hundred seventy. Wow. Little piece of trivia for you. Well, and I'm glad you did this because once in a while people accidentally bump this, and then they're all down, and they're like, "Oh gosh." How do I get back up to the top? And then what most people probably do would be go, you know, take their mouse, go over to the far right, find, what do I call that, the cursor, or the drag, or whatever it is, and just kind of drag it all the way up, which is fine. It's no big deal, right? But there's a quicker way to do it. There is a quicker way to do it, which is one of our, our next ones that we want to do. So if we want to go to A1, the very beginning, what we need to do is hit Control and home key and again on my keyboard I have to hit control function and home key it's just really the size of the keyboard if you don't have that function button or home is its own then probably control and home would do it but for me control function and home and it takes me right back to a1 I use this right one a lot go. with big data sets I'm just somewhere way down I'm way off to the right I want to get back to a1 control home and I'm done Perfect. Um, what if you're, maybe this is what you're about to say. Let's just say that you were over in column H or, okay. Let's How say about column right XFD? And what I was going to say, let's say you don't necessarily want to get to A1, you know what I mean? But let's say in this situation. I want to be at A12. Yeah, you want to stay in the same row, but get back to the first column. How would you do that then? Perfect. So this one, you have to use that home key to get you to the first mm -hmm. column. So I'm going to hit control and function and home. Because again, I don't have that separate home key. And that, oh, sorry, that took me to A1. If I go back. I think you just don't need the control, right? Just function home. With function that at home. There. there you go. Yep. Perfect. Yep. yep. Function at home is going to get me right back to A1. On my keyboard, it's just, it's just home. So I'm way off to the right, and I want to go. You know, maybe I want to go to the start of that um, of, of that row so I can see some preliminary information there, but I don't want to go all the way back up to the top of my spreadsheet. I just go home, and it takes me right back to column A. 
Perfect. Use them a lot. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's start by just getting a little bit of information about this data set. It's some sales data. We have invoice numbers, different customers, the amounts of each invoice, the date, and the due date. We're going to do some invoice. data analysis. A little data analysis. Yes. So just a good general beginning point when you have a data set is it just get a sense of the, the scope. Is it going to be, you know, what's the average, max, median, minimum, things like that. Mm -hmm. So we'll start out with average. This is a sales table. We're just trying to figure out what is the average dollar amount that we sell to a customer. Is this our example, first, on a single invoice. Is this our first function here that's not like a plus, minus, multiply, divide? I think so. I think this is groundbreaking. So Excel <laughs> has a whole bunch of functions built in. You don't have to do equals the sum of all of these divided by however many there are. That would take way too much time. Mm -hmm. Instead, Excel has average just built in. So you hit the equals button, start typing average or spelling average. So I do A, V. And now you can see, well, here are just five functions in Excel that start with A, V. Mm -hmm. And I want to do average. You could click on it with your mouse. Never do that. Forget you have a mouse for right now. Instead, yeah. I like to use the arrow key to navigate to decide which function I want to use. In this case, it's average. And once I have it, I hit the tab key. And that automatically puts it in, opens the parentheses for me. I don't have to finish typing average, and I'm ready to go. Yeah, now it's basically saying, what do you want to average? That's what it's asking you to do next. Yeah, and so you see where it says number one, comma, number two, comma. What that means is I could click on the first one, 3,922 then hit a comma, and 1,865. You see it moved over to number two right there, and hit the comma. Now it wants the third number. Well, that would take forever with a large data set. So well, about the only time I would do that is if I only had two things that I wanted to average, and I thought they might change, right? So then I would just build that formula in there so that would constantly update, but that's usually not the case. Yeah, usually what I do with average is once I get to this point, I click on, so if they're all in the same column, say C, I'll click on C, and then now it's averaging everything that's in C. I can close my parentheses, hit enter, and there we go. I have what's, my average. What's nice about that, I was wondering how that was going to work. I think your way is a little better. I would have got nervous because of that header in there. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if the header would mess stuff up. But Excel is really smart. It ignored it. It says, hey, it's not a number. I can't average it, so I'm just going to ignore it. So another way you can do it, we'll show them on the max formula. How about that? Sure. If you do equals in this one, in, I, mean, I feel like Excel is created by a bunch of accountants because they're not super creative with the names. <laughs> if you want to know the max invoice amount, it's going to be equals max. And you can see there's match, max, a whole bunch of different ones. But we're going to do max. And I usually, with something that short, honestly, I would just type in equals max, open parentheses. That's me, at least, just because it's so short as compared to going through that drop-down list. Um, but you know, either way, it gets it done. Yeah. For usually what I end up doing is the most number of, or however many letters I need, so I just have to do a couple arrows down yeah, to get it. Yeah. So there's max, and then I'm gonna just navigate. Instead of clicking on C, that would work again. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna navigate with the arrow keys over to the first one, 3,922. Hold the Control and Shift key to highlight it. Hit the down arrow, so Control, Shift, and down arrow. That's everything that I want highlighted. All I have to do, I don't even have to close the parentheses. I can just hit Enter. It automatically closes the parentheses for me, and you can see the largest invoice amount was 4961 And just to show how those constantly update in cell C2, why don't you just go ahead and type $10,000 in there or something like that, and we'll just see how that <laughs> 10987 <laughs> He just has to do something different. I love it. Hey, look he at that. Automatically updated. And did you see the average updated as yeah, well? It yeah. was 2470 cool. Control Y to redo that, and it's yeah. 2543 So as you look at those, certainly what Ben did first, just highlighting that, that whole column was quicker, but you don't always want to you know, do the function with the whole column because you might have multiple sets of data within a column. So that's why we wanted to show you how you would just select the set of data, what Ben did with the max that way. All right, so median, Boz, you want to take a shot at that one? Well, if it's me, because I usually just type in the equals, I do type in equals medium, median, open parentheses. But look at, see, I just did M-E there, yeah, yeah. and if I hit tab, yeah. that saves me D I A N. And open parentheses. It does. It does. So I'm just like counting up those seconds. I'm saving in my life right we here. We are. We are. So yeah, you, you kind of get it alive. Now you got the open parentheses. And if you if you just want to click on the C, um, you know, that, because we're trying to do the whole the whole data set here, just click on the C and then close parentheses and then enter, and we're good. Perfect. And then one last way I want to show you how to do this is with the formula builder. 
And so we've been taking more of like a shorter or direct route because once you get into Excel, that's, that's really what we want you to know and how to use it. But let's go into minimum here. Don't forget to hit the equal sign first. Equals minimum is gonna be equals min. And I'll hit the tab to select it. But once I have it, I can click on this little F of X here. It's an insert function, our function key. And it brings up the arguments for me. So min, it gives me a little description, right? Returns the smallest number in a set of values, ignores logical values in text. And that's why C works, right? Because it's ignoring yep. the text, which is the amount. Mm -hmm. And so it tells me, hey, here's how you can do it. And then I could click number one and click that, and then number two and click that, and number three and click it, right? And so it's all updating. And of course you're not gonna do that because that takes way too much time. You wouldn't do it with this one, but some functions, it, it, it works out pretty nicely on this one, especially ones that are less intuitive. We'll have some of those coming later in our series, so hopefully everyone watches all 12 videos, mm -hmm. but if you just stumbled on this one, we just wanted to make you aware of kind of that really nice function pop-up window. Yeah, and so for number one here, you can just click on C, and it you know, puts in all of C, that's all you need for your input, because that's all we want to find the minimum of, hit okay, nice. and there we go, 127. Nice. Yep. Some very quick data analysis. Boom, yeah. nailed it. Yep. You ready to take the next step in data analysis? Well, I mean, the next one is one of the most cool features, and we've been using it a long time, but I mean, it is just extremely cool. The possibilities are endless when it comes to pivot tables. Yeah. So yeah. to do a pivot table, you're gonna click anywhere in your data set that you want, and so I just click randomly B5, that's fine. And then on the, you're probably on the home tab to start. If you go to insert in the insert ribbon, mm -hmm. in the tables section, there's pivot tables. Yes. And so you click pivot tables and it says select a table or range. Well, I know my listing is A1 to E98. If I didn't like that, I can always click outside, click on A1, control shift over, control shift down. Hey, look at that, A1 to E98, it's right there, right? Almost it's ready to always go. it pulls up what I want. You know, mm -hmm. and, and part of that, before you get to the pivot table, you gotta make sure you have good data. So I clean up my data, and we're working with a cleaned up data set to begin with here. I clean it up, make sure there's not any extra spaces or something like that in there, so by the time I get there, it's gonna work for me. Exactly, and it's always good just to double check, make yeah. sure you're not pulling in something you shouldn't. Sure. Um, then down here, I usually go to a new worksheet Me for too. a new pivot table. So we'll leave that. If you wanted to put it in the existing, you could, and then just pick your cell. So maybe this cell is where we want it to go, but we're going to go with a new worksheet instead and then hit okay. And look at that. That's not very impressive. Look at that. Look at, there's nothing to look at. Just some weird thing. What Why would be something to be cool to know about our data? You're a business owner. You have that sales data. What's something you might, might want to know? Which customer do we sell to the most? So All right, customer customers. information. Because you saw yeah. in our original data set that we had, I it, was, go ahead, it was just all set with so many yeah. different customers. And so what we can do in a pivot table is summarize, automatically sum, how much did we sell to each customer? Because then what we did with that max, we figured we found the biggest sale period in that previous sheet, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't know what customer we sell to at the highest amount when we include all sales. Well, if you want to hold your breath, all right, we're gonna sit here in silence for 10 minutes and then figure it out. No, all right, so if we take customer number, drag it to rows, and it doesn't have to be rows. If you wanted to, it could be columns, right? So each customer had their own column. Yeah, rows I'm, would work better here, but it's, yeah, just play with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's basically with pivot tables. You just play with the data until you get something that looks kind of cool. Like so sandbox. we have our uh, customer numbers, each customer there, and we wanna figure out the amount. And I'm going to click and drag it into the sum of values. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it that way. You can check the box. It'll try and guess which one you want. Um, but I will do the sum of values. I usually drag it too, yeah. Yep. And it, it defaults to sum. Mm -hmm. So what I can see now, if I look through this listing, that customer 105 had the most. 36,164. No. Well, what if you had 100 customers? Are you still just going to kind of eyeball that? You might get it wrong. You know, you might get it wrong. What you could do is sort it. Um, highest to lowest. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do this one. You could right click as I an example. I just right click right within my data. Per, and sort yeah, like largest to smallest Boom, if you wanted to. It. That would work. Yeah. Um, otherwise, up here, sort and filter. You can click on this, smallest to largest, largest to smallest on your yep. home tab. A bunch of different ways to do it. Will you throw some commas in there? It's tough for me to look at that thing. You getting a little stressed out I right am, now? I am. I want some commas. All right. So I'm in my data. Just control, shift, and down to highlight all of it. Click on the commas. And as much as you like the commas, the decimals actually stress me out. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead yes. and yes. get rid of that. It adds no value anyway. Yeah. So now we have something 
Okay, a little bit useful here. Yep. Um, one thing cool, like I said, it defaults to the sum. If we want to, we can go to our sum of values here, click on the little drop down, and on value field settings, we can do a count. So maybe I can see for each customer how many sales they did. Notice these customers changed. It's still sorted highest to lowest. So 101 had the most frequent number of sales, right? I had 14 invoices with 101. Yep. So we, we basically looked at that one as far as which customers did we sell to the most times, not the highest dollar amount. But that just might be something you want to know. But average amount might be interesting to know too. So sure. if you don't want to navigate all the way over here and click on this drop down, just within your data, right click and you can see summarize values by sum, count, average, max, min, product. There's even more options. Mm -hmm. We're just going to stick with some of the basics right now for average. And now you can see the highest average was also 105. Not only the highest total, but the highest average too. It'd be nice, you know, this is pretty good information, but you walk in, you hand that to a manager and that might just be a lot of numbers for them to look at. It'd be nice just to make this more visually appealing, frankly. I would love that. Uh-oh. <laughs> I clicked off of my pivot table. What do I do now? Where's all these things that I wanted to click and drag? Oh, what do I do with it? I, I think, are they gone permanently? No, all you gotta They're do is right click there. right back in there. It's right back. In case you made a mistake, just Drag it out, move it off, it's gone. That's right? how you get them out of the pivot table. Yeah, mm -hmm. just drag them into the data. Click basically. and drag. Literally, you're not going to break it. It's really easy to put it back together. Just kind of experiment yes. with stuff. So back to what you were saying, Boz. It Sorry, is... I, ju I jumped the gun a little bit. I no, tried to predict that you were done, but I, I No, it in. was good. The, um, the thing we want to teach now, though, is how to enter in a graph pretty easily. And again, Excel is smart. It's a smart tool. So if we go to insert, and remember, I'm just clicked in my data right here. I'm going to go under the insert ribbon charts and I like using recommended charts. Do you use recommended charts? Yep. Usually it's, it's because it's smart. It brings up the most common usually. There you go. So I could put this in column format or line format. I could put it as a pie chart. If they have a lot higher average, they take up a bigger slice of the pie as a scatter plot, I guess wouldn't really work with this one yeah, An this area good, chart that yeah. might, you know, Give it, it a little heft. It really just depends on the data, how it's best presented. Column charts uh, for something like this are probably where you want to be. I agree with that 100%. I would do a column chart for this one, hit OK, and it automatically pops up. I can move it wherever I want in Excel. Average of amount with the total. You see I got my little customer numbers. I can filter this for certain ones. Maybe I only want to show customers 100, 102, 104, and 106. And nice. then you can see it's just wow. those four. Wow. And there you go, I can just focus on that. If I wanna clear the filter, I can click on it, clear the filter, back to normal. What if I wanted to reorder by customer number instead? So not like who has the highest average sale, but I actually just wanted to show customer 100 first and so forth. Yeah, so for what I would do is go back to the data yeah. in that one, and then I would right click in the data, and then where it says sort, mm -hmm. um, Smallest to largest, 100 oh. to 110. You can see my table is now 100 that to 110. Chart just updates in it's real time. It's pretty slick, isn't it? It's awesome. I actually like how it took a second to show me things were moving mm -hmm. that make me feel like something was happening. <laughs> That's actually a good point. So you know something's <laughs> happening. It's like, did something just happen? All right. Well, should we uh, should we do a little summary here? I think Make sure we covered all, yeah. everything. I think we did. All right. Hopefully, you know how to navigate a little bit better around the text using the control, the home, and perhaps the function key if you need that. Um, you got your introduction into how to do some of the formulas that Excel has, like average, max, median, and min. And you've opened your eyes to the wide world of pivot tables and graphs in Excel. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Lesson 5 here in the Ben and Boz Microsoft Excel video tutorial series. Tune in next time in Lesson 6, a sneak peek. We're going to teach you about a VLOOKUP. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you next time.